much now under Thierry Henry since he was announced as the under-21s head coach. He's got a five-win, two-loss record. Four months from now, they'll be facing off against the United States to open up the Olympics as the United States have an opportunity to test themselves against a side of some serious caliber. That may have hit a hand. The referee may have indeed given a penalty here. Kalamuendo buries it in the bottom right corner. Rolled off. Brilliant for two. Left footer from distance, and the French take a 2-0 lead. Yao, overlapping run. Puts onto his right, finds the back of the net. The U.S. have one. Kate Cowell has one with him. He'll do it himself. And the U.S. equalize coming back. Down two in front of a stunned crowd here. A fantastic result for our U23s against France in a friendly. And I emphasize a friendly because we're actually playing them officially first in the Olympics in Paris this summer. So that it's a nice little teaser, a little appetizer for that entree to be here in, a, what, three or four months. Pretty exciting. But a good performance overall from our guys. France, obviously, pretty stacked in multiple positions. At 79th minute, they're up 2-0. They probably think they're going to lock it up. We score basically two identical goals from the left side cutting in on our right to get the 2-2 results. Two goals in three minutes from Kate Cal and Griffin Yao, as you saw. Uh, Jesse, you watched this game. What were your uh, your favorite moments from this? Because I, I liked that we had a little bit of not giving up, that spirit that I feel like our team is known for maybe more than some others out there. Yeah, so I only saw the highlights of the Guinea match, but it looked like a good performance. And, you know, in this one, I thought we had a really good start. Uh, France makes a couple of changes from the team that that played the Ivory Coast, but we had a good start. Pa Paxton Aronson had a big chance uh, in, the, in the beginning phases of the match. And then France's kind of quality took over the game a little bit, and I think getting to the 2-0 lead was earned. But I thought that the three in the middle were pretty solid in, in Tessman, Busio, and, and Morris. And I thought uh, Paxton Aronson for the whole match was pretty active. Par Paredes was pretty active as well. Duncan McGuire wasn't able to get himself going after the uh, initial phases, but, but he defended a lot and did a lot of dirty work for the team. And, and you know, even in the phase where, where France was, had the ball a lot and was better, it wasn't like they created a ton of great chances. So I, I, I thought overall... Uh, the, the the performance was solid and they were tested, but they tried to play out of the back. They tried to do the things that that they that Marco Mitrovic said before the game that they were going to stay true to what they what they believed was important for them to be a good team. And then obviously that when they went to the subs and they brought in Griffin Yao and they brought in Kate Cowell and the plays that they made, you know, again, a, a, you start to see a pretty deep U23 team with some with some good talent, not the same level of talent as France, but on the day. What a great experience. You know, the, the stadium looked pretty full. The energy in the stadium was was big. The the opponent and the way they played and the way they tested our team was was uh, I think real and and put them in a in a tough game and then in the end they they come out with a 2-2 draw. So in this window, I would think that Marko Mitrovic has to feel great about the things that they accomplished, the challenges that they experienced and the way they responded and the things that they will learn from it. So I look at it as what a fantastic window, what a, what a great opportunity for this team to test themselves and that they should feel like they belong and they have a lot to learn and they have a lot to get better at, but that they belong. So um, we won't be able to catch France by surprise in the Olympics, but nonetheless, we will be much stronger for this for these two weeks that they had together. Okay, now Charlie Le Le Keep, who is a French publication, had their rankings and ratings for this particular match. And Tanner Tessman and Patrick Schulte in goal were the only two players to have sevens. There are a lot of fives and sixes within our team. John Tolkien got a three, and I think a little unfair, a little harsh because he gave up the penalty in, in that particular regard. But but outside of Tessman and Schulte, was there was there anybody else who you thought, hot damn, this guy is the goods. And not only will he be good for us in the Olympics and and maybe a player that we build around, but also a team for the senior national team. Yeah, I wouldn't go that far. But um, in, in terms of players that I think improved and showed showed something, I, I was really impressed with uh, Brian Reynolds because that's a player who I hadn't really seen in a while. And to see him bursting up and down the right side, he looked good with his pace and dribbling. And um, they they had some, some good opportunities, like Jesse said, to start. There was a couple of chances. Um, where, you know, on, on another day, maybe Paxton Aronson 
uh, scores on that header. I think Kevin Paredes had a couple of half chances. Uh, they were dangerous on the long ball when um, Duncan McGuire would check in and draw one or two center backs. So I think, um, you know, there there were opportunities for, for the U.S. to really uh, score a couple of goals and, and take France by surprise. But ultimately, this game was a lot closer than than – I think anyone ever anticipated because the U S did have some good chances and didn't concede too much. I thought Tanner Tessman de- definitely take a, took a step forward with, with his progress. Uh, I thought he did a good job of clogging up the middle and, and uh, his di- distribution has improved quite a bit. So uh, I think uh, Maximilian Dietz uh, as a center back also looked really good. Um, so that was a, a position that I think we all were questioning the center backs of, of this youth national team and, he looked pretty solid. So I'm, I'm, uh, I think, if anything, this really helped the U.S. in terms of confidence moving forward. Now, the French, French team is going to look quite different. Uh, they had three injured players. They had three players go down from, from illness before this game. So uh, Bradley Barcola picked up a, a, a hamstring strain. So th- this is not the, the full strength uh, French side. And throw on top of the three overage players that they'll get. So if anything, it allowed the U.S. to say, hey, they're not that much better. On our day, we can compete with these guys. And it's the first game of the Olympics in the group stage. Go out and try and get that shock draw, just like you did here. No one, The expectations are going to be that, that you lose against a, a strong French side. So um, I'm very impressed with what they're able to do, uh, accomplish on this trip. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how this all plays out and who Marko Mijic decides are his overage players that he wants to bring into the team and which positions those go. And and you mentioned this about uh, competition for, for places, Chuck, on the French side, but also the U.S. are going to have some competition for places as well. And in one area, though, Griffin Yao, who was the man of the match against Guinea, had two assists in that one, scored in this one off of the bench. He had a chance to sit down with Morning Footy and answer one of your questions, Chuck. Let's hear what he had to say. You, uh, you obviously showed your quality in, in this last uh, camp. There's only 18 spots on the Olympic team. How competitive is it for these 18 spots, knowing that there's three overage players that can come into the to the picture? Yeah, I think it's it's super competitive, um, and I think that's kind of what makes um, you know the whole dynamic of the group so so great. You know, everyone is trying to show their best of 24 uh, seven. You know, whether it's at training, whether it's in the games, whether you know, you're coming off the bench, whether you're starting, everyone is, you know, a top, top player. So everyone is constantly competing, constantly trying to give their best. And yeah, it's, 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 it's definitely high stakes. Um, but, you know, like I said, I, I think that's, that's a, that's a great environment for a team. You know, I don't think you ever want to be a player and have the feeling like, you know, I'm comfortable, you know, for me personally, when I'm uncomfortable and when I'm feeling like, okay, you know, I've got something to prove, I've got something to show, you know, that's where I think me personally, I've had my best games is when I'm, when I'm out there to, to prove something to everyone. All right. Griffin. Yeah. I love that little chip on his shoulder. DC, I, I gotta say, of- Jimmy, go ahead. I gotta say, I, this is what even the European scouts and clubs love about the Americans is their fearlessness, their desire to compete, their desire to get better. Like, it's amazing. Whether you look at the first team or the Olympic team, like the American spirit and the belief that these kids have in themselves and the, the, now the, the desire to go get tested in difficult situations in Europe and be put over their head and that they know this is the best way to improve. Like, you just have to, you know, really tip your hat to all these young men and the way that they're trying to be the best version of themselves and 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 what they're becoming because of it. It's amazing. I love that interview. Loved it. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Uh, Griffin Yao, he had a comment recently where he said that his current club in Belgium, and I guess you take it with a grain of salt because he's currently playing for this team, Vesterlo, who has got six goals and two assists in 20 matches this season in the Belgian first division said they believed in him or he felt like they believed in him a little bit more than where he came from in DC United. Uh, so I don't know. You take it with a grain of salt, of course, but I, I, I do appreciate that mindset of the mentality and, and uh, long may that continue. This is going to be a hell of a summer for both our full team and for our Olympic team. And, and I can't wait for it to kick off.